Pixar was busy working even after the success of movies Soul and Inbound last year. This year, their movie Luca aims to continue their success and, based on the initial numbers so far, Luca does not disappoint. Everyone seems to love it. But what's with the Vespa and why is Luca bent on getting one? What happened to his friendship with Alberto? Did the characters get the happy endings they all wanted? Those are just some of the questions people have about the movie. If you have watched the movie, you might be wondering about the ending too. In this video, we're going to talk about the movie's ending and explain the secrets behind it, so stay tuned. But before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on, so you don't miss any of the new videos we post. Have you seen the trailer? The teaser trailer has numerous intriguing hints for how the friendship between the three main characters unfolds. Not only does it show progression, it also teases the inevitable complication of the boys showing their real form as sea monsters every time they are in the water. The movie brings to life the spectacular region of Cinque Terre in Italy and the fictional town of Porto Rosso. Set on the coast of the Italian city of Porto Rosso, Luca Paguso is the preteen sea monster who dreams of living as a human. He lives with his family and spends most of his days herding a school of fish, which he finds quite monotonous. He wants to swim to the surface to see what life is like up there. However, his parents, Daniela and Lorenzo, restrict him for his own safety. But as we all know, warnings have never deterred cartoon characters from exploring and discovering what's beyond their surroundings. Just ask Ariel from The Little Mermaid. Luca neglects his parents' warnings and swims towards the surface with a new friend, another young sea monster named Alberto Scorfano. The magic happens in their journey. Once on the surface on dry land, Luca finds out to his delight that sea monsters can transform and become humans. The two fast friends then start spending their leisure time at Alberto's hideout, a small watchtower located on an isolated island. There's an item at Alberto's place that bewitched him, a poster of the famous Italian scooter, a Vespa. They decide to build their own Vespa, but when they find out about the triathlon, they decide to join it, because winning it would give them the money they need to purchase a Vespa. Before we talk about the entirety of the movie, we'd like to explain the tearful but nevertheless uplifting ending. However, we'd like to warn you beforehand that there are many spoilers ahead. Luca is currently streaming now on Disney+, Plus, so you should go and watch it. While preparing for the race, Luca develops a desire to go to school with Giulia, and this leads Alberto to feel that he might be losing his friend, and this fuels tension leading to the Portoroso cop. Alberto exposes himself to the townspeople as a sea monster, but Luca throws him under the bus to conceal his own identity. This makes Alberto realize that his good friend Luca might leave him, just like what his father did. Luca decides to compete in the race not only to get the Vespa, but also in the hopes of making it up to his good friend Alberto. Despite his hesitations, Alberto tries to bring Luca an umbrella during the race, but ends up revealing his true form, and this makes him a target of the villagers. Luca has no choice but to reveal that he is also a sea monster to protect Alberto from the angry mob. Julia gets injured trying to save them from the ensuing chaos. Luca and Alberto turn back to help her instead of jumping in the ocean and running away like always. Upon seeing the true forms of his daughter's friends and their attempts to help her, Massimo, Julia's father, is moved. The act of kindness brought about a change in Massimo. He also points out that Luca is the rightful winner of the Porto Rosso Cup since he crossed the finish line before going back to help Julia. This earns him the admiration and respect of the townspeople. This also leads to peace between the townspeople and their neighbors under the sea. In the aftermath, everyone gets what they want, and they ultimately realize that they have to go their separate ways. Julia, for one, only spends her summer in Porto Rosso and spends the rest of the year at school with her mother. Luca is saddened that he is unable to join her, but is happy for her. Alberto, with agreement from Luca's family, decides to sell the Vespa so they can use the money to send Luca to school with Julia. Luca is ecstatic upon hearing the news, but Alberto reveals that he won't be going with Luca. He will remain in Porto Rosso with Massimo, who has given him a home after being alone for a long time. He convinces Luca to proceed without him. The two friends share a tearful hug before Luca leaves. The movie ends with Luca looking out into a big world full of surprises, both excited and scared at the same time. The movie has a touching conclusion, and although the end was bittersweet, everything ended on a happy note for all the characters. If you stayed through the credits, you'd know that although the film has ended, the adventures of Luca, Julia, and Alberto are just beginning. Animated in a 2D storybook and sketch style, the credits hint at some of the things the friends will be up to, albeit separately. Luca sends constant updates from school to Alberto through letters, and he stays with Julia and his mother. 
Her mother isn't bothered at the slightest that he is a former sea monster. He even figures prominently in her paintings. Alberto is pen pals with Julia and Luca during the school year, while also busy with his job assisting Mazimo on his fishing boat. Massimo frequently visits Luca's parents and grandmother, thanks to his diving suit. Luca shows his classmates his true form and is readily accepted by them. Alberto, for his part, becomes a popular figure around the village and even gets a job as a lifeguard. Though in the end, it seems like everyone got exactly what they wanted and is happy living their own lives. Everyone wants to know what happened to Uncle Ugo. Ugo is Luca's paternal uncle and spends much of his life in the depths of the ocean. In the beginning, we see him as a colorful sea monster, but then morphs into a deep sea anglerfish. Initially, when they discover Luca has been sneaking away to the forbidden surface, they threaten to send him to his Uncle Ugo, and this scares him, so he runs away to Puerto Rosso. Uncle Ugo doesn't appear for much of the movie, and is only seen again post-credits, where he is talking to the sheep-like fish Luca had been asked to watch over previously. He spends a long time talking about the happiness he finds living in the depths of the sea, until he drives the fish away, presumably because of boredom. Luca has favorable reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, so the more reason that you should watch it. The coming-of-age story of two boys with big secrets in the Italian Riviera is currently streaming on Disney Plus and has a fresh score of 90% and an audience score of 88%. The numbers speak for themselves. Audiences all over the world love Luca, and they can't get enough of it. Pixar has always been well known for their heartwarming animated films that are not only praised critically, but also adored by viewers. And the apple doesn't fall far from the tree when it comes to Luca. The team at Pixar just has the ability to strike right to the heart of viewers. Director Enrico Casarosa makes his directorial debut in Luca, and he reveals that the movie takes inspiration from his childhood spent in Genoa, Italy. To get a feel for the culture and the land, Pixar sent their artists to the Italian Riviera for research. The sea monsters in the movie, which were used as a metaphor for feeling different, were based loosely on old regional folklore and myths. The movie's animation and design were inspired by hand-drawn and stop-motion works and Hayao Miyazaki's style. Casarosa says the movie pays homage to Federico Fellini and other classic Italian filmmakers. The movie premiered at the Aquarium of Genoa on the 13th of June, 2021. It was originally set to be released theatrically in the United States on the 18th of June. However, due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, the film was released on the popular streaming channel Disney+. Plus. Now, onto the Easter eggs. The director says there's plenty of them in the movie. Where do you start looking for them, though? Let's start with the Pizza Planet truck. Casa Rosa said that they always put special names and numbers like A113. A clue is to look at the pizza truck towards the third act of the movie. The little Luxo ball has the classroom number of the animation at California Institute of the Arts that has been placed throughout various Pixar movies. The movie has plenty of tributes to Italian culture, and Casaroso wanted to represent his culture in a loving way. There are plenty of Italian homages, from Marcello Mastroianni's cameo to old wonderful Italian movies. It seems that Italian people will have the most fun looking for the Easter egg in the movie, but that doesn't mean that non-Italians can't join in on the fun. The movie is a great opportunity to learn more about Italian culture or test their present knowledge about it. We have come to the end of the video. Have you watched Luca? What do you think about the movie and its ending? Let us know in the comments section down below. Stay tuned for more interesting videos, and we'll see you soon.